Hello everyone, this is Jack with John Stuart Mill Society. Welcome to part three of my series on John Stuart Mill's philosophy based on his book On Liberty. Um, today I'm on page 23, uh, so let's get right to it. Uh, this is what Mill says. The dictum that truth always triumphs over persecution is one of those pleasant falsehoods which men repeat after one another until they pass into commonplaces, but which all experience refutes. History teems with instances of truth put down by persecution. If not suppressed forever, it may be thrown back for centuries. This is kind of, to me, it's sort of a call for people just to, to speak up, because this is a common excuse, really, for for laziness, excuse for silence, and an excuse for self-censorship, to say, well, I don't need to speak the truth. I don't need to speak my mind on something. If if something if I know it's true, well, you know, all these other people are wrong, but they aren't going to like it when I tell them that they're wrong. So I'm just going to remain silent. Why? Because truth will always prevail, or some some variation of such a claim that that's your defense you use you know but but uh, as mill says that's not true <laughs> the the idea that that truth will always prevail uh, many times it will eventually prevail but uh, the idea that that truth has some sort of power to 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 uh, to convince people more than a falsehood there, there's no evidence for that. Mills cites examples of the the Reformation um, and how, for those that don't know, the, the Reformation started about 500 years ago, and it was, um, as we know today anyway, and Martin Luther was the guy that started it and all that. But Mills cites how there's there was about 20 other examples of a Reformation that was started, but you don't know about it because those reformations were put down the the people who started them were persecuted that their reformations were not successful um i'm not a religious person myself so i I wouldn't consider that a truth that was put down but but nevertheless um you you hear about martin luther but you don't hear about all the other times that that reformation or some variation of it was persecuted and put down, and people were killed, and and uh, that put an end to that real quick. Eventually, it was successful, but uh, yeah. That, so the fundamental point, as I alluded to already, is that whatever your excuse is of remaining silent, it's probably not a good one. It probably isn't. It, it's. The most common, as I said already, is the idea that that truth will always prevail. That that uh, you you don't need to speak up because there's some sort of power uh, inherent in truth. That well, I don't need to speak up because the truth speaks for itself. Or or you know. It only requires one other person to to speak the truth. And sure, there's there's this mob of fools that are misguided, but it only takes one real brave person to to speak the truth, and and that's all there is to it. And so, why does it have to be me? Well, that's nonsense. It 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 takes a lot more than just one person speaking the truth. So, that's why you need to speak. That's why you need to speak. It, it's. It's something that you need to fight for. It is not. Uh, it is not. The truth is not nearly as powerful as you might think it is. So that's why you don't remain silent when people are rambling on about some nonsense that you know is false. And whatever excuse you're telling yourself to remain silent is probably not a good one. And uh, as I said, the most common is the the idea that truth has some sort of power that it actually doesn't so that's why you speak up I welcome comments disagreement and all that I'd like to hear 
uh, any 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 sort of alternative views that anybody has. But um, like most of this philosophy, uh, it seems pretty solid to me. So, but uh, I welcome other viewpoints. So by all means, 